Okay, so now it's time to chit chat a little about the Civilization V downloadable content. Like a lot of contemporary games, Civilization V has a lot of extra material. Most of it is map or civilization packs, and I'll leave it up to you whether or not that's something you're interested in. I will, however, offer my opinion on the two big expansions, Gods and Kings and Brave New World. The first one, Gods and Kings, adds a lot of new features to Civilization. It adds a lot of minor tweaks in terms of balance or the tech tree, as well as the introduction of an entirely new unit type, the Close Range Attacker. These are units such as the new Machine Gunner, who, while they cannot strike from a distance, can still attack adjacent enemies without fear of retaliation. However, in addition to adding some new units and some new civilizations, the big thing that Gods and Kings puts into the game is religion and espionage. Now, the addition of religion comes hand in hand with the new resource type called Faith. To gather faith, you either need to build religious structures such as shrines or make alliances with new religious city-states. Once you've accumulated enough faith, you can found a religion, setting up its name and its iconography, as well as a set of bonuses that will improve based on the number of cities that are following your religion. With additional faith points, you can either try to improve your religion and the bonuses it gives you, or purchase missionaries to spread your religion to the furthest corners of the land. Religion is an interesting addition and adds a lot of strategy to the early game. There are only so many religions that can be founded, so you have to make the choice between accumulating faith or accumulating a different resource such as gold or research points. However, your religious bonuses will eventually be outpaced by technology, and in the mid to late game, religion doesn't hold as much sway as it once did. Which, interestingly enough, is right about the time that espionage starts to kick in. The new espionage system allows you to recruit agents who can either spy on enemy cities or perform counter-espionage in your own. Agents inside enemy cities can either improve relations or steal technologies, as well as dispelling the fog of war around the city itself. Espionage is essentially a sort of late-game equalizer, allowing weaker civilizations to keep an eye on their neighbors as well as potentially steal technology from them. As if that wasn't enough, Gods and Kings also contains a number of new scenarios, including the Civil War and, my personal favorite, Empire of the Smoky Skies, a, a steampunk-themed scenario with airships and top hats. So yeah, I would easily recommend Gods and Kings. The other expansion is a little more complicated. Brave New World is a DLC that rebalances and redesigns some of the features of Civilization to allow for longer, more complex games. There are new leaders and civilizations, as well as the introduction of trade convoys, which allow you to earn money from neighboring civilizations or move resources within your own civilization. However, there are also a number of new alterations. Ideologies, for instance, are a late-game policy edition that allows you to custom build your own cultural advancement tree. And speaking of culture, the cultural victory was completely redesigned. In Brave New World, you don't achieve a cultural victory simply by accumulating policies. Instead, you use tourism, a, a measure of influence that is accumulated over time and is supplemented by the addition of new artifacts and works of art, such as paintings or musical scores. Brave New World is a good expansion, but it's not as obviously beneficial as Gods and Kings. I would still recommend it, either to someone who has seen all that Civilization has to offer and is looking for a deeper, more complicated game, or maybe just because you want the entire set as a complete collection. Alright, thanks for checking in. See you later. Договорились.